Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, you know, as Katie mentioned, we're going to have a great discussion about investigative branding and what that means for your organization and how to get your audience a little bit more engaged with what you're doing. Um, so just a little bit about me. I actually come from the nonprofit space. I worked um, in marketing for a large animal shelter for a couple of years. And so I think I understand, um, you know, the struggles that you guys probably experience, but also the, you know, the wonderful triumphs of working in the nonprofit space. And one of the biggest things that comes to mind when John and I were talking about creating this webinar was as a nonprofit, we understand that you experience so much competition. There are so many other nonprofits out there doing wonderful things too, but how can you make your organization and your mission and your work really stand out? Um, to an audience and capture new donors and inspire people to get involved with what you're doing and volunteering and and donating uh, um, And this is kind of what we came up with and You know, I think the first thing You know before we dive into you know, the investigative part is really let's kind of go back to the beginning and think about branding, you know your brand and what is the impact that your brand has on your audience you probably have a mission statement, you know, you've got your logo, you might have a vision statement as well and understand your audience, but are you taking a step back and really thinking about that branding? Is it exciting your donors? And if it's not, you know, we can help. If it is, great, let's make it better. <laughs> um, there's always ways to move up and, and make a bigger impact up for your organization. Um, so, you know, let's dig down a little deeper. So what is investigative branding? It sounds really cool, but, but what actually is it? So yep. we yeah. thought about it as a step-by-step -step process. So John, I don't know if you want to take over. I'll take over here. Yeah. So investigative <laughs> branding, and, and we were just talking before the call, and I was thinking about this as, and where we kind of came up with this phrase, investigative bra branding, is from investigative journalism. You know, as it turns out, there are all these awesome stories inside your organization. It's just like, how do we retell them? And the process for really retelling those stories is not being a writer or being even, uh, you know, an actor in videos or being a podcaster necessarily. Um, you know, but you do need to be like an investigative journalist. You need to find the stories inside your organization and just become more of an interviewer. Just interview the people that know the story, right? So the, our little step-by-step -step process here is, you know, just asking the questions to yourself and the people within your, your organization, you know, why do you do what you do? Why do you even exist? What's the, you know, we say our mission statement, but it's much deeper than that. You know, what, what is it in your words? What is it in the words of a donor? What is it in the words of a beneficiary? So, um, you know, and if you ask different people, they'll tell you different answers. But you want the people that really get it, the people that are really in love with the organization. Typically, it's staff. Typically, it's the biggest donors. And, and just ask them these questions, right? And then publish them. So it's funny how a lot of our websites, you know, we, we tell a terrific story in real life, then on our website, we don't we aren't really telling the same story or we're kind of telling the I filled out a form version of the story. You know, it, it like the way I answer questions on my tax form seems like the way I wrote it on my website. Like we're just so passionate about it in real life. But then sometimes when we get it out there in the world, it just kind of loses some of its uh, excitement. Anyway, so our questions here, you know, why do you do what you do? Who do you do it for? How does it work? Nonprofits are very complex in the way that they get things done and the way they do things. And that complexity is super interesting. So how can you draw a diagram that, that, that tells people how it works? How can you walk them through a complex process in one, two, or three steps? How can you make them, you know, memorize, you know, believe, you know, get engaged with and, and love the way you do things? Um, how have you made made a difference? You know, what are what is the impact? You know, sometimes we're we're pretty good, sometimes we're not at showing these this impact in numbers. Sometimes we're we're good at telling stories. You know, sometimes we're not. Sometimes I I visit nonprofit websites that don't talk about the impact at all. 
you know, other than we have impact, but it doesn't prove anything. You know, how do we prove it? And, and uh, we talk a little bit later here that the, the proof is in the stories. Um, you know, give people a reason to care. You know, make it real for them. Uh, show how, how real people are helping real people. Um, you know, and then lastly, you know, how can they help? Give them some ideas on how they might donate, how they might give, how they might volunteer. Um, so I'm going to pause there. And uh, actually, I'm going to comment on one thing because I see it in the polls here that 62% of people are saying that they're kind of the content they're creating in their marketing is their people are somewhat engaged. So I want to break down into somewhat engaged uh, versus super engaged, love anything. I have, oh, I only have one person that, oh, yeah, one person that is super engaged. Because So I'd like that person, if, if you wouldn't mind, sharing a secret with us. You know, what's the one thing, three things that you're doing that you feel is the secret to your success? You know, why are they super engaged? And if you could just share that with us in chat, say, hey, I'm the super engaged one. Here's my secret. We would we would love to hear it because we want to share that with the with the uh, larger percentages here. Anyway, yeah. Uh, by the way, you'll find that I kind of babble a lot, so um, you know Melissa's going to keep me on track. I will. <laughs> um, yeah. So now um, you know. Let's kind of dig down. How can you define your brand, and how can we think about this in smaller steps than you know, sometimes talking about branding seems super overwhelming. So let's break it down. So as John said, like, we know and you know that your organization has amazing things that you do and amazing stories to tell. What we often see is that you might just be having a hard time figuring out how to actually tell that story in a way that is memorable and meaningful to your audience. And so to break this down of how to actually get to your brand and ensure that it is meaningful is the first piece, discovery. Talk to your staff, talk to your volunteers, talk to long-term supporters of yours. Ask them to tell you about your organization. You know, see what they're saying and what in their mind is memorable to them and make sure that that's actually in your branding. So then you get to the branding step. It's your culture, it's your identity, it is everything that makes your organization you. Then you gotta think about the messaging. How are you communicating this to your audience? And you know how can you communicate it better that they see just how special you are you know you're special, but are you making sure that your audience is understanding that? Cool, so I could talk to this a little bit. I'm hoping people can hear me better now. I'm just using the laptop mic and, and uh, threw away that headset, which was supposed to be great. Um, just kind of put some thumbs up or some, I hear you better in the chat if you are, uh, because yeah, you missed the best part earlier because of my audio, so it's gonna go hopefully not downhill from here. Um, anyway, in 2021, we think it's very important for nonprofits to be cool. You know, what, what, what do we define as cool? Um, cool gets you attention. Uh, just flip to the next slide, Melissa. Um, cool does three things, and I know that, that some of you might be thinking, uh, yeah, oh boy, like, we, you know, we're a lot of things, but we're anything but cool. Um, however, you know, I'm going to argue that. I, I think, you know, we think every organization has a cool factor and that it's really those things that make you yourself, it, your biggest donors, you know, the people that care. It's the things that they find are super cool. It's the reasons they're engaged. So how do we kind of find that coolness in ourselves and just kind of um, you know, practice what we preach uh, in our marketing, on our website, you know, in our social media, where, again, I think that we're great at this in real life. Um, I think everyone, you know, all of our staff members, all our volunteers are just so passionate about what they do. And then we just sort of fail in, in um, really retelling that story, um, you know, in our marketing and on our websites and things. So, 
So cool stands out. You know, cool is is uh, you know competent. Cool is engaging. Cool is inspirational. You know, cool is the factor that moves people to actually give, to actually make that donation. You know, it's really the 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 secret sauce to to successful fundraising. Um, you know, we we think about. I always have clients come to me saying things like, you know, we want to be like Charity Water, or we want to be like the uh, Susan B. Komen, you know, uh, foundation, like what, what's working for them that's not working for us. It's like, well, you know, their website's cool. Their t-shirts are cool. I understand what they do. You know, they have a certain excitement built in. Uh, but when I go to my nonprofit clients events, that excitement is totally built in. You know, you know they, they do a great job. You know, we try to record more of that in video. We do interviews on site with people at events. You know, this is the great stuff. You know, share that passion, right? But when we just say, oh, this is what happened at the event, blah, 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 in our blog post, nobody cares. But when we put up the video about what someone did and how this person was engaged and, you know, hey, this person just, you know, matched $1,000 or whatever it is. You know, interview those people. Just just take your iPhone and put it in their face and say something. That stuff is going to get people moving. And I'm guessing that those are some of the things that my uh, my poll answerer uh, with the super engaged is doing. Um, here's the good news. You know, I've been saying it all along. You don't have to pretend to be cool. You don't have to be inauthentic. You don't have to to be someone you're not. You know, you're already there. It's like you know. The people that know love you. You know, I always say things like, hey, if your donors or your partners, you know, knew everything you knew about your organization, you know, would they give? Would they partner? Would, would they give of their time? Would they make it happen for you? And the answer is always yes. And I'm like, well, why aren't they doing it now? Because because sometimes that's a gap that needs to be filled. You know, how do we relay not only what's happening in our organization, in our social media, but how do we relay our passion uh, for it as well? 